Despite posting 11 wins in the regular season, the Baltimore Ravens 2020 campaign ended in playoff disappointment once again as they fell to the Buffalo Bills in the divisional round. And for Lamar Jackson personally, while he did win his first playoff game against the Titans, it was his performance in that game against the Bills, which included a 101-yard pick six before he left with a concussion. That will help serve as motivation for the upcoming season. I'm focused on winning right now. I'm trying to bring my Super Bowl here. As far as improving their roster, the Ravens brought in wide receiver Sammy Watkins in free agency. And they also added Kevin Zeitler and Alejandro Villanueva to help beef up their offensive line. And in the draft, they spent their two first-round picks on a couple of former Big Ten standouts in wideout Rashad Bateman and linebacker Odafi Owe. This also could be a breakout year for second-year running back J.K. Dobbins, who no longer will have to share carries with Mark Ingram, who was released in the offseason. But for the Ravens to get where they're trying to go and play in Los Angeles in February, they'll need Lamar Jackson to play like an MVP in the regular season and the playoffs. Let's welcome in Evan Washburn, who has now made it to the east side of the country there. Let's talk about Lamar Jackson because, of course, he was start to he was late, excuse me, to start Ravens training camp because of COVID. But he said when he was at home, he was trying to practice as much as possible because he didn't want to show up to camp and have his coach tell him he looked rusty. So how does Lamar Jackson look? He looks great. I mean, the one thing about Lamar, Amanda, is he's a gamer. And look, there's holes in his game that people love to pick apart. But when he needs to make a play or this team and this offense needs him to make a play, he often does that. So obviously not a full padded practice out here today. So the observations and evaluations are limited. But from what I could see, Lamar looked like Lamar and primed and ready for another uh, very productive season. You know, we saw Josh Allen get his extension with the Bills, part of that 2018 draft class, same as Lamar Jackson. Now, John Harbaugh has said, look, there, there's no rush to get things done with Lamar. We have faith. But is that looming over him? Is that affecting him in some way? If it is, he's not showing it publicly. And, and Lamar is pretty much an open book. And look, he wants to get paid, and he knows he's going to get paid, and I would expect it to be from this organization because they've been so forward about their expectation to make Lamar the quarterback here for a long time. And there hasn't been, at least publicly, a declaration of this needs to happen before this date or before the season starts. So there's obviously work being done behind the scenes, but Lamar's focus is solely on winning and trying to get this team into the playoffs, into the Super Bowl. It's something that he brings up a lot. He doesn't bring up a contract, if at all. So the Ravens get Lamar back, but they have now lost rookie wide receiver Rashad Bateman. Uh, of course, they took him 27th overall in this year's draft. He has to have groin surgery. So here's more from Harbaugh on Bateman's injury. Bateman, to give you the announcement on Bateman, he actually is getting a surgery to either today or to either tomorrow or Friday on his groin, uh, it'll be, he'll be back from that sometime in September. All right, so Evan, the good thing there is he's, he's just gonna be out a couple weeks, not a couple months, but this is added now to the absence of Hollywood Brown, uh, who is, his injury they fear is worse than initially expected. So how are the Ravens handling all of this when it comes to the receivers? It's a lot to sort through. And look, the passing game was under and continues to be under the microscope uh, heading into this year. The Bateman injury is really disappointing because he was flashing early in camp, talking to John Harbaugh after practice. He believes he's going to be a great, great ride receiver for this team. His ability to get off the line, even against the corners that they have here in Baltimore and Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey, he was having a really strong camp. And when you're a rookie and you lose that much time, it hurts your development. So the hope is, yes, he can be a effective at some point in September, but probably more towards the midpoint of the season. As for Marquise Hollywood Brown, well, yes, it's worse than initially considered. It's still an injury that they feel like he will be able to get over and be back some point in the preseason, their hope is, and then if not, definitely for week one. And you also should mention Miles Boykin, who hasn't been uber productive as a wide receiver, but he's part of the depth there. It's been tested. The positive sign is, up to this point, Sammy Watkins, who has a long injury history, is been or has been really effective early in camp and most importantly has stayed healthy.
Evan, I, I need an update on this offensive line because they traded away Orlando Brown this offseason. Today, I believe they have four, correct me if I'm wrong, four projected starters on the O-line are out today. What's going on here? Well, the, every offensive lineman here has their own story. You've got Kevin Seitler who's got the foot. They brought him over in free agency. He was actually working out on one of the side fields, so a positive sign. Villanueva, he's missed the last two days. Doesn't sound serious. More of it being rest. And then you've got Ronnie Stanley, who's coming off serious ankle uh, surgery and injury a year ago. So I, I wouldn't say that this is a situation where the line that they hope that's going to exist week one is not feasible to, to uh, occur, but what you're dealing with is a lack of time on task and that has to be the major concern there much like the the passing game and the wide receivers the two areas of focus for this team heading into this year have been the areas that have been most compromised by injuries during training camp now none of those other than Bateman are long term but it's affecting their ability to build chemistry on a day-to-day -day basis as we sit here in early August. Evan, the Ravens' defense, they lost Yannick Ngakwe, Matt Judon, and free agency. I sent you a message. I said, Evan, how are you feeling about the Ravens' defense? You said, I am feeling very good about it. Expand on that. Well, they, they have continuity, and then in areas where maybe you could point to vulnerability, Matthew Judon being signed by the New England Patriots, they were, he was their top pass rusher a year ago. They had depth in Houston and Owe in the draft. And this the defensive line, they call them the Monstars from Space Jam. That's Space Jam 1, the better one, by the way. Uh, they, they've been really the anchor for this defense. And then on the back end, you've got the personality and the swagger of Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Chuck Clark, and Deshaun Elliott. And they get Tavon Young back to play that nickel position and the linebackers it's two young guys inside Malik Harrison and Patrick Queen but they just make plays all over the field this defense Amanda to me is going to be the the safe side of things at least to start the season because of the depth the continuity and up to this point they've stayed healthy so much like in, in years past here in Baltimore I think the defense is going to lead the way out of the gate yeah across the board that offense needs to get a little bit healthier there uh, didn't even see the second space jam just not even get a bother with it all right Evan Washburn out there at Ravens training camp thanks so much do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.